Good afternoon, good evening students. I hope you are doing good. Welcome back to the channel. Today we're back with another lecture concerning psycholinguistics. This is the final part or the final video concerning the chapter of psycholinguistics and it is lecture number four entitled The Neuronal Structure and the Neuronal Network. Before I start, as usual, I invite you to like the Facebook page of this channel in order to be notified whenever I post something new and also subscribe to my channel if it's not already done. That would encourage me to do more and also help you out in the period of exams. So first things first, we are going to start with the nervous system to give you a general background about the nervous system. And we are going to move to the neuronal structure and more precisely later on the neuronal network. So what is the nervous system? Um, first, it is a system of the body okay, that includes the brain, the spinal cord and the nerves. It receives, interprets and responds to stimuli from inside and outside the body. Okay, so if you feel some kind of pain, whether it is physical or emotional, you should know that it is the nerves which carry the signals to the nervous system to be interpreted and translated into pain. In other words, if you pinch someone and they feel pain, the action of pinching them is not really painful if the nerves do not carry that information or that feeling to the nervous system. If someone, for example, has a problem with their nervous system or the nerves in general, which means the signals cannot be carried out by the nerves to the nervous system, this person cannot feel pain or simply the action of being pinched. To put it more um, in an academic way, we can say that we conclude that in case there is no nerves or there is no way to carry these external or internal stimuli to the nervous system, we wouldn't feel a thing or anything. But here's the thing. Now, these examples are physical mostly. But how about thoughts, ideas, language and information? This is our main focus of today as linguists. How are thoughts, ideas, language, information carried. How are they carried, right? Certainly not via nerves, which means the nerves are not the ones which carry information, language, ideas and thoughts. Um, but there is an answer, there is something that carries uh, these things that we are talking about. The answer is, um, we call them neurons. So, Anything that is painful, physical mostly, is carried via what we call the nerves. But when it's a thought, it's an ID, it's a language or an information, it is carried via what we call neurons. So, what is a neuron? First things first, a neuron is a nerve cell which is responsible for transmitting a nerve impulse. Neurons also send messages to the brain or the opposite if you want, they send messages from the brain. They can either send a message to the brain or they can send a message from the brain. This is done through um, what we call an electrical impulse or a chemical signal. You see, neurons send information, but not only information, they also send senses and even thoughts, like we said before. And you should know that a neuron is divided into two parts, or if you want to call them regions. A part to receive and process information coming from other cells, this, is, this region is called the soma, or the soma. The second part is uh, for conducting and transmitting information to other cells, called the axon, right? And one thing very important that you need to know is the fact that different types of information are received, processed and transmitted by neurons depending on their location in the nervous system. Okay, if, for example, if you have some neurons located in the occipital lobe, they process visual information. 
Whereas those located in what we call the motor cortex, I have already explained this in the previous video. The, in the motor cortex, of course, they process and transmit information that controls the movement of muscles. So these neurons have specific, let's say, um, function, right? So if a neuron is located in the occipital lobe, this neuron processes visual information, while a neuron which is located in the motor cortex area, in the brain of course, this neuron transmits and processes information that controls the movement of muscles. Okay, now we are going to explain what do we mean by the soma, what do we mean by the dendrites, and what do we mean by the axon. So the soma, also called the cell body, is the main portion of the neuron. In the center of the soma, we have uh, the nucleus of the cell. The nucleus stores the chromosomes that contain all the genetic material. Emerging from the soma are the dendrites and axon. As you can see um, in the, um, on the image uh, displayed on the screen, so the soma is called the cell body. It is the main portion of, an, of the neuron. In the center of the soma, we have what we call the nucleus of the cell, which means the core. And the nucleus stores the chromosomes that contain all the genetic material. Emerging from the soma, as you can see, are the dendrites and the axon. What do we mean by the dendrites? The dendrites are essentially extensions that receive signals. Okay? Some central nervous system dendrites have little sub-branches that are called dendritic spines extending from each dendrite as you can see and the axon is described most of the times as the tail of the neuron it conducts and transmits information and in some cases may receive information now we move to the function of every neuron's component we have the soma it is the body part of the neuron that is responsible in maintaining the life of the cell. Without the soma, the cell would die. The nucleus is responsible for storing the cell's hereditary material, what we call the DNA. It also coordinates the cell's activities including growth, protein synthesis, and reproduction. And then we have the dendrite. The dendrite is responsible in receiving the simulation and activating the cell to the function by conducting electrical messages to the neuron's soma. And we have the axon, of course. The axon is responsible for transmitting information away from the cell body to different neurons. So the axon transmits the information to different uh, and many neurons because the information does not go from one neuron to another but it can go to many neurons uh, at the same time. Then we have the myelin sheath which is responsible for um, myelinating one portion of one nerve or one nerve cell if you want. It wraps itself multiple times around the axon creating a multi layered sheath. This is what we call the wrapping process. The uh, degeneration of the myelin sheath causes degradation of the neural impulses that are transmitted along the axon, thus degradation of the cognitive functioning. You can find more information about the myelin sheath uh, on a website that we call Britannica. Uh, it's, it's, it is a very important and a very useful and practical website. I hope you can check it and you can find more information about uh, these uh, things that we are currently studying. And we have what we call the node of Ranvier. You see, since the nodes are spaced out, they fa facilitate or they make things easy or easier to the rapid conduction of the information, where the signal rapidly jumps from node to node. Then we have what we call the Schwann cell. It supports the nerve generation. If damage occurs to a nerve, the Schwann cell helps in the digestion of its axons. 
If chiffon cells are prevented from associating with axons, the axons die, of course. So then uh, at the end we have the axon terminal. It is the part that is responsible for releasing the uh, neurotransmitters to carry information out of the cell membrane. That is to say, the final point of the information transmission to another neuron. Then at the end, we have what we call the neuronal network. What you need to know about the neural networks, it is the fact that information is transmitted through one neuron, electrically, electrical impulse, to the target cell, chemically. So it starts electrically, and then it turns into a chemical signal. It starts as, like I said, it starts as an electrical impulse to the soma, through the dendrites, then it is processed in a chemical signal throughout the axon to the axon terminal. The axon terminal is the final step of sending an information or an ID. And there we find another neuron waiting to take out that information. Like I said, um, Sending information does not happen from one neuron to another and that's it. It can happen from one neuron to many others. And the meeting point of the axon terminal of the first neuron and the dendrites of the target neuron generates a new electrical impulse received by those dendrites of the target neuron. The whole process, what we have talked about, is repeated at the level of the second neuron about to transmit the information to another third target then a fourth one then the fifth and so on and so forth so this is a bit complicated as a lecture because it's not really made for linguists but we are ought to know how does the neuronal structure function and the neuronal network as well because we are mostly dealing with thoughts ideas and language so there you go. If you have a question, feel free to ask them in the comments below or contact me on my Facebook page. I will answer you as soon as I see your message. Otherwise, I tell you, stay safe. See you in next video. Peace.